being on black folks and this is all self-explanatory and I'll basically hold my cursor up over here and you can read that and actually I put it up here because you know you can always freeze this basically and you, you see SCADA supervisory control and data acquisition and then they let go of it and now I'll basically put my cursor back because they don't want me to talk about that too much and as they take my cursor away again that's fine I know how to deal with that so what we have is radiation on Mars and basically this is why you don't want to live in Mars too close to the Sun and as you see the radiation basically 130 counts per minute is hazardous to your health and as you see they just scrolled up to it because they looked they just went to where they had it lower if it would have been lower they would have been fine but as you see they were ready for high counts per minute you see on their graph and who knows how high they went basically it should go up to a good thousand or something like that three thousand four thousand so anyway 160 counts per minute it's just a CPM rads radiation and as you see I should be able to put my cursor up here and get the same don't notation again of when and see if I can put my arrow down here and I go up and anyway there's radiation on Mars ladies and gentlemen because it's too close to the damn Sun the Sun is a radioactive radio radio radioactive and basically we get beta gamma just barely because we're far enough away you want to be as far as Earth or farther away from the Sun to survive Saturn uh, Titan would probably more than likely be the most highest. We've, we've seen river, riverbed rocks on the floor of Titan. Okay, It seems to be the most positive first step of anything. So the idea that we are basically just looking at Mars to see what killed it off. Radiation. So the nuclear radi uh, regulatory committee in the n basically is not in trouble, but they need to basically, we need to go away from being nuclear and have a proton dynamo uh, and basically CO2 burn CO2 and keep burning it and burning it and burning it and burning it until you incinerate it down to nothing and you can pretty much do that and basically it's drill baby drill we ain't gonna quit drilling for oil and that's what you got the computer and why you got everything in plastic bottle and IE that they use in the dose rate in a plastic bottle and in silicone so the idea that in that's pretty good uh, basically way to be able to pick it up because basically you could be if you're in a silicone bubble or a plastic wrap then you're pretty much safe from radiation uh, so we do have rads and CPM on the face of the earth from a lot of tests mistakes and fuka fudge up and you know about fuka fudge up so basically in your area at home 130 is the industrial rate that is hazardous to your health okay so we already know that radioactivity dose on Mars is not good you don't want to go to Mars ladies and gentlemen so somebody that was saying he wanted to uh, populate Mars yeah we'll send you there bro we'll send you there you can hang out up there with all the radiation so it's time for you to go to Mars and that's a scientific person from a certain country so basically he is pretty much it's always been kinda of known it's anyway there goes somebody's dream if not we can make his dream come through and put him up there so radiation on Mars you don't want to go to Mars ladies and gentlemen now the cursor should put up the message. See, you get the, and I see how that got went away a while ago when I was recording. So, and as you see there, it basically it should come up again. There you go. And you, so you get it. Uh, what they say. Um, but it's pretty uh, positive that Curiosity showing evidence that basically a bunch of asteroid material, other planets, and so forth have hit uh, Mars. But at the same time, check out the interesting marks that are on. And uh, the only th way that the, the idea that that can be contributed to be anything other than some kind of stress fracture uh, or possible, well, you just come up with whatever you want in your mind, but how would anything be able to etch something like that onto a rock? And as you can see what I'm seeing right there, so we go ahead and zoom up real fast because basically and I could probably just load the picture, but what the hell would just show the re actual resident? resolution and everything that they have on the shot and we'll pop into a meteorite basically more than likely and as you see we got a great picture that it's not pixels at least the pixels are combined and compressed enough and great camera enough to be able to take a big look at the item and what I was seeing was these here marks right here now isn't that amazing as heck 
okay? So we'll see what somebody tries to photo crop or send out of that, because basically if I just minus out of this a little bit, about three or 400, you can see what I'm talking about, and you can see it at the farther away motion too. I zoomed in on this stuff here, okay? Marks. So the only thing that it positively could be is everything in space, if it's an asteroid that hit uh, Mars at one time and broke up, that the absolute positive that we already know that everything pretty much breaks up into uh, and as you see I made a mistake there and we will go ahead and get 777 up here zoom back into that and as you can see there my pointer doesn't work at 700 okay so no matter what you can see those etchings there so basically no matter what either that or you got signs of something put marks on rocks but it pretty much should be to the actual factual that uh, either they scratched the rock with the Mars probe which I really doubt or that uh, some other some kind of intelligent life form makes some kind of mark or it's just the triangulation uh, of crystallization of breakup of some object that basically is that rock right there and as you can see it must be an asteroid or something that has hit the earth because as you can see this very small sedimentation below i.e. the Mars surface it's been some kind of asteroid or something like that it's hit uh, Mars before and you have the description right there but no matter what the very interesting of these etching marks there that you can absolutely see and actually at 700 I can point good so you see this here these X and also a V there. So either that or some uh, intelligent life form is throwing rocks on Mars and trying to leave a message for somebody, just like the Pioneer satellite. So here's another zoom in on that stuff there. So it's there. You can your eyes can see it. Now they hit this with a laser to get composition. Okay, bang, bang, bang bang and bang so are we also leaving messages for if there's any intelligent life form at least sure, sure looks like maybe we are or somebody else did so no matter what you see that so it's going to be interesting to see what NASA says on that in the future who's actually putting these markings here or who did or what did so because you can see that there it's very easy to see that so back up the video. Now in SCADA, uh, spider webs my channel out and stuff like that, try to make my counts small. Uh, it would be interesting to know which one is which for this here, because basically I believe this is the original picture that I had up, but most of the time I'll show you in the future what, and I don't change this, and also this here. So it's very interesting. I'm getting a different template every once in a while. So they got me scattered out, channeled, spider webbed out, so that's what keeps my accounts down. So mor morally and ethically, big kudos to, uh, because at least they're telling us that they put those marks there, okay? So at least they're also admitting that they would have the ability to put some kind of something up there to say this or that, or say, you know, see? So they are always the writers of the show. You see what I'm saying? So the idea that they put these marks there, doing their scientific tests to try to see the, of the rock nest, try to see uh, the chemistry makeup, you see? density so forth so everybody worrying about a black hole that we're gonna and basically it's not because basically this is growing and going that way what it is doing is like a laser the star cluster or whatever this is here and whatever's in a supernova of two stars doing what they're doing and basically what we see up beside the Sun but it's way off in space is basically two stars going supernova as you can see you can see the yellow the uh, darkish colored blue pinkish red and you can also see the twirl here and this is that star cluster and you, when I zoom out you'll understand what we're looking at I'm at 700 so 777 as you can see it's just like DNA like a chain of DNA in space and here we get somewhat of unpixelized connection which I've showed you on some videos today of what they're pixelizing up and not wanting us to see and, it's, and this goes off to the Sun you see so it's all a DNA chain out there in space and it's all a spiral and it's actual factual here the theory it's not a theory it's an actual fact and here we have the electrical layers 
of the sun here. You get a very good example of that right there. And then you get a very good example of the connection to planetoid objects that have already cooled off. That's right, dead stars. Then off into alive stars from the DNA chain of the sun. Actual factual data. Okay, because this is an actual picture from space. As you can see, the black hole, but there is really no such thing as black hole. It's just like when the 9-11 towers went down, whatever man-made used a laser to destroy the Twin Towers. Uh, so, basically, here and here we have the razor nodes, the laser razor nodes out in the space of huge stars. And it's all radioactive and electrical. So that's a laser, and it's basically not a laser, It's, but it's doing a laser activity. It's all physics, and what we will show you is we will zoom out from the 777. We'll just go to 400, and then we'll go to 200, and you'll realize that that's our object way the hell out in space. It's basically a DNA chain, and it proves that the sun travels through space like a corkscrew because all we are is a DNA genetic makeup floating through space and Earth is hiding out at the end of that chain on the outside of let's go ahead and go to JPL and basically I could let this play you can go ahead and go to this video we'll go ahead and we'll pop down to uh, what we'll go to 150 and there you go and that's that shot and you can go to this video and that's quite a few days and basically there's a chain of life out there and it's stars, clusters, asteroid belts and we're showing it to you right there now realize that Mars is way out here and we have very heavy magnetical to the other side of Earth and so forth and so such especially the Sun because you can see that's the Sun now this is the Sun's path this is just a Perlian line here okay Mars is way out there and we are finding stuff on those other videos that you've showed that I've showed you and basically we'll take the Perlian line away and we are flipping the map all the way around but then there that goes away there's the sun's travel it'll go that way this is what it's already traveled through time and you actually can you see even NASA starting to show the projection if you, if you blow that up you can see the hatches that they know that the sun twirls like a bullet through space so basically it twirls and then we twirl around the sun and it's all a big DNA chain makeup and we're clinging to the magnetical of the Sun right there okay now on this side over here there's nothing currently okay not much there is stuff that we're discovering out there because it's been hiding behind the Sun as you can see from Earth when we're normally looking at it and we're getting good peeks at all this stuff that's behind the Sun because it always stays directly in line behind the Sun out of our view and gets blocked so there are stuff that's being found NASA's just not telling us about it yet okay so all this stuff's out there that I've been showing you in the videos before. Your eyes don't lie to you. The Soho cameras, the telescopes on Soho are awesome, are they not? Okay, so we get great views out there. Let me take you to set you real fast, give you something recent. Now actually we'll just stay here with a fact. As we travel across this plane here, no matter what, it's just a line. It's just a man-made line there. This is the sun's path. This is where it's going to go. And as the Earth rotates and all these objects, Venus, Mercury, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn up here, and all, and Pluto, and Neptune, and everything that's farther out that I can actually show you on here, but it'll mess up the shot. So, as we travel, I'll just hit play, and we'll start off, and I can hit it like that and make it go faster. And actually, what's goofy is they're making it, actually, I just got it upside down. So, as we come around, Earth goes around the Sun, counterclockwise, and as all the objects, as we break that plane, as we go across, if I can get back to the plane, and we went way ahead in, in the future, so if I refresh real fast, which I can probably do there like that, and we'll come back, it'll have to take a second to load, but there, we're back at it, and I bring it back up to get rid of the line, so that you realize that that's the path of the sun, and we rotate around it counterclockwise, so as Mars is all over here all alone and everything else is basically heavy on the other side. We're going to keep picking up in electrical magnet magnetical which is going to give us quakes. We're going to keep up ticking for a while. Okay? Because until we pass the plane that's you can draw it out there anywhere, but all the weight in space is over here, all the magnetical Jupiter everything. Venus, Mercury, and we're going to cross this path. So we're going to get a lot more magnetical magna earthquakes 
for a long while all the way over in this area until everything catches 